Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about using a different login page. So currently if an anonymous user tries to access a particular section of our web application that is currently being locked down with the authorize attribute, they're going to be redirected by default to the forward slash account forward slash login page. But let's say that this is not where we actually have the login page. Maybe we want to put it in some other section of our application, something like members forward slash login. How can we go ahead and change it so that it points the users to this new location instead of the default that comes out of ASP.NET Core identity? Well, there's a simple little configuration you can do in your code. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and let's take a look. So currently in our application, if a user comes to this member home controller and tries to go to either the index action or the access granted action, they're going to run into this authorize attribute, which is going to check to see whether or not they've logged in. And of course, if they haven't logged in, then they're going to be redirected to the login screen. So let's go ahead and run this application real quick here. Let's go ahead and start without debugging. Now when the user tries to navigate to member home, they're going to be automatically redirected to the login screen. And I had Fiddler open up here in the background. So we can see here is our initial request to just the main page, just our home page. But when we tried to access the member home, we could see that we actually got a 302 result. And if we inspect the raw here on net 302 result, we can see 302 found and the location is localhost with the port number forward slash account forward slash login. And of course, a return URL as a parameter. So this is automatically set up by default with ASP.NET Core identity as the default redirection when we're using the authorize attribute. That's this forward slash account forward slash login. And of course, your browser saw this 302 result with a location as part of the, the header there, and it just went ahead and opened up that page for you. So that's all fine and great, but what happens if this account forward slash login isn't where you've put your login page? What if you put it somewhere else? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move our login. So I'm gonna take it out of here. And instead, I'm going to create a new controller here. So we'll go add new item, MVC controller, and let's call this members controller. And now let's get rid of the index page, or the index action, I should say. And we're just going to have the login and both for the get and the post for the login. Now we do need to bring in a using for this login view model. So let's bring that in. But we need to also notice that this sign in manager, this is a property that if we go back to our account controller, this is a, or not a property, this is a private variable. So that's this sign in manager. So we need to recreate this. This is just a dependency injection thing that's going on here. So we should probably go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna add for our constructor. And I'm gonna to get to that in just a moment. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the private variable because I just copied that from the other controller. Bring in some using statements to make our compiler happy. And now I'm gonna assign sign in manager something, which I need to get passed into the constructor. So this is going to be sign in manager application user, call it sign in manager. And we're just gonna assign what gets passed in. Oops, sign in manager, there we go. So we're just gonna sign the dependency injection version of the sign in manager to this private variable here inside of our members controller class. And there's our login page for our get. And of course, now our login for our post is happy now that we've created that sign underscore sign in manager and everything looks good. 
Now I do need to also move the view, right? Because there's a view that comes along with this login page. So I need to go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna go to views and I need to create a new folder called members. So let's go ahead and add members. And we need to move that login page from out of count over here to our members. Okay, pretty simple. Was there anything else that we needed to do on this members controller? Looks like we've just added a model state error. Okay, no, I think that should be good. All right, so we've moved everything properly. I'm just gonna clear out my, you know, do some removing and sorting to make it nice and clean. Okay, so we've sufficiently moved our login process to this members controller. Now, if I try to go back here in our application and go to member home, what's gonna happen now? It's gonna take a moment here to compile because we just made some changes to our code. And now instead of being redirected to a login page that works, we're getting a 404 error for the account forward slash login. So let's take a look at Telerik here and just see what, what the fiddler says. And at first we got the same 302 error message, or I shouldn't say error message, it's actually a redirect. So we have 302 found, and the location it tries to redirect us to is once again, account forward slash login. So this is the default configuration that comes out of the box with ASP.NET Core Identity, but it no longer works for us. And so instead, it, when it tries to go to that location, it's just giving us the 404 error. So we need to fix this. And actually the process of fixing this is very, very simple. All we need to do is we need to go to the startup class where we added identity, where we did a, the addition of ASP.NET Core Identity in the middleware pipeline for our application. And on this add identity method, we can actually pass in, if I go to one down here on our overloads, we can see that we can actually pass in an action of identity options that are kind of some setup things, some options that we can pass into this add identity method. So this action, all we need to do is actually pass in a Lambda expression of various things that we want to configure. So let's do options. I'm gonna call this variable options and we're gonna do options. And actually I'm gonna move this down a line so we can see it well. We could do options dot and on here you're gonna see there's a lot of options that we have available to us. But the one in particular that I'm looking for is under cookies application cookie and then there's finally the property that we want which is the if I scroll down here login path so that's the one that I actually want to set and here we can say what our new login path is if somebody gets hit by that authorization attribute and they can't log uh, you know they haven't logged in yet so this time we're gonna change it to members forward slash login okay so that's all I need to do there Let's just do some formatting things and save that. And now if I try to go once again to member home, it's gonna take a moment once again to recompile here in the background and we'll see what the response is when we're done. So sure enough, this time we got a correct redirect and now we're at the login page. And you can see the URL that we've been redirected to is members forward slash login. And if we look at Fiddler, we can see there's our initial recall for uh, member home. It's got the 302 found and now the URL that it redirects us to is members forward slash login, which is the correct URL now. So it's a pretty simple change, but it's one that can definitely bite you if you wanna to try to reconfigure you know, where that login page is in your application. Uh, so I just kinda of wanted to show that to you guys. If you guys have any questions about this, please feel free to drop me those questions in the comments section below this video. Uh, if you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. If you didn't like it, 
go ahead and hit the thumbs down. I don't mind, but if you do, please tell me why you didn't like it, okay? Drop me a comment in the comment section and let me know what the problem was. Maybe maybe there's something that I just need to do a little bit better on these videos, and you might be able to help me out with that. So anyway, take care. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. I'd like to give special thanks to James McCoy, whose kind and generous donations have made this video possible. If you would also like to contribute, please visit us on patreon.com forward slash programming made easy. Yeah.